Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It is day three of the Zero Project Conference 2022. Uh, my name is Robin Timweiss. I'm the manager of the public sector here at the Zero Project. We're coming to you live from the United Nations office at Vienna. Behind me, you can see our participants roaming around, enjoying the sessions, and I'm delighted for this definitely highlight of a fireside talk today, which um, I am privileged to be having with Cliff Edwards and Raphael Segal, both from the government of South Australia. And uh, I'll let them introduce themselves, talk a bit about their background and what makes them experts in accessibility. Um, but before I do that, I would like to take uh, the time to first of all describe myself for those of you who can perhaps hear me but not see me. I'm a white male in his early 30s. I have a short cropped beard, um, unfortunately receding hairline because that's what happens as you get older. <laughs> I'm, wearing a, I'm wearing a blue dress shirt with a dark green tie and um, my dress shirt is rolled up because I have a cast on my right hand due to a recent hand injury. And uh, to the left of me is someone I would also like to introduce our online audience to is Petra Plitschka, our fantastic graphic facilitator who has been with us at the Zero Project for many, many years already because we believe that, especially in a conference setting, everyone learns and processes information differently. So what she'll be doing during our session today is graphically facilitating the remarks which uh, we will be getting from Cliff and from Raphael and to visualize the South Australian Government Online Accessibility Toolkit. So we'll pan over to her at the end of the session and she'll give us a graphic feedback on our session. So with those introductions made, I would like to hand over to both Cliff and Raphael. And if you'd be so kind to also visually describe yourself and give a quick, quick introduction, who you are, your background, your job title, and then we'll jump in and talk about uh, the Government of South Australia's um, online accessibility toolkit, which of course is a 2020 Zero Project awardee. Cliff, would you like to get... Oh yeah, Raphael, go ahead, get started. Ah, so, uh, thanks very much, Robin. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Cliff Edwards. I um, was the um, uh, project lead on the Government of South Australia Online Accessibility Toolkit and uh, and the policy as well. Um, my background is in human services, so I um, enjoyed uh, many years uh, working with people with disability, um, uh, mental health and uh, corrections, and uh, fell into the um, online space around nine, ten years ago, and really the uh, web accessibility uh, content standards really um, sort of struck home with me. Um, there was uh, uh, to counter the opinion based um, uh, sort of advice that was out there at the time and uh, really got behind that and uh, was very lucky to uh, work alongside uh, RAF as well for a number of those years. Over to you, RAF. <laughs> Did you want to describe yourself, Cliff? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, Definitely, uh, um, uh, instead of uh, Robin's receding, I'm definitely receded uh, of uh, a white male, uh, 47 and uh, bald and uh, a little beard as well. So uh, that's me and I'm wearing a polo shirt and I think it's a grey bluey colour. Right. And I'm Raf Siegel. Uh, I'm uh, the senior technical uh, consultant uh, for the website design system and, and the accessibility toolkit for Department of Premier and Cabinet in a section called Office of Digital Government. Um, and I helped uh, actually facilitate uh, with Cliff uh, the creation of the toolkit and the platform that it was built on uh, in regards to uh, you know, putting it out there to, uh, to the public. As a, to describe myself, I'm a darker complexioned male uh, of middle age. Um, I have a full beard, I'm wearing glasses and uh, wearing a black shirt seated in front of my microphone. Thank you, Raf and Cliff, for that introduction. And the avid, or especially for the avid viewers of the Zero Project Conference, this is not the first time we've actually presented uh, this the government of South Australia's 
online accessibility toolkit because we were very fortunate enough to have had a member of the Austrian parliament, Verena Nussbaum, act as a mentor and um, present uh, the innovation coming from the government of South Australia to also political audience. So, uh, you know, we, we're very hopeful that this will result in replication. But I would like to take a step back and, you know, Raf and Cliff, for you to come in and kind of tell our audience how did this endeavor actually begin? What was kind of the ignition point for what is now an exceptional online accessibility toolkit? Yeah, thanks, Robin. Um, so our journey really began back in 2017. Um, we were asked to review the existing South Australian government website accessibility policy. And uh, we did that in partnership with an organization here called Vision Australia. And we, what we started to do is realize that that policy wasn't uh, robust enough uh, for what we wanted to, for it to be going forward. And we also had an, uh, an opportunity to align it with the Disability Inclusion Act that was uh, upcoming. And of course, our state disability um, inclusion plan, which for the first time was asking agencies to report on their progress, especially around online. So um, we saw it as a proactive opportunity to remodel the policy. And uh, once we started to do that, we pulled together a, a working group with uh, key organisations in Australia. So Vision Australia, Royal Society for the Blind, Blind Citizens Australia, um, our Australian government, other states, and uh, leading accessibility spe specialists to develop the policy. And then from there, what we uh, the policy and we put it out for community consultation, wide ranging community consultation, reaching over 46,000, 56,000, sorry, um, Your Say subscribers. And Your Say is our digital engagement platform for South Australian government, um, in excess of 1,000 people with disability um, across the state, uh, over 1,000 public servants, um, including uh, all levels of government here in Australia. So, 100 organisations, and it really became a wide consultation piece. And from that consultation, we um, we managed to, oh, there was 150 pieces of individualised feedback incorporated into that draft policy that we'd worked with Vision Australia on. So, a really rich, um, robust consultation. Um, and out of that uh, consultation became uh, the uh, a need to have supporting resources as well, which uh, which we worked on and uh, over time evolved into the online accessibility toolkit, which we're here today to talk about. Raf, is there anything you want to elaborate on that? Otherwise, I would have a question about the consultation phase itself. No, the only uh, thing is the consultation phase, I think, uh, was pretty robust where uh, we extended uh, to over, you know, would you say, I think it was over 100 organisations, wasn't it, Cliff? Yeah, 100, 100 organisations in excess, yeah. Um, and uh, over uh, nine, there was 900 members as well from the Australian Government Communities of Practice, um, which uh, provided some rich feedback and the UK government as well, their accessibility group over there, particularly grateful to a number of people over there in the UK. And of course that reached all levels of government in the UK as well. So it was uh, in that stage a terrific consultation period. And uh, as I say, we got some really rich feedback uh, from the community around how we could improve that initial policy that was in draft at that stage. You mentioned the UK government and it being involved in the consultation phase. Do you know of examples or case studies where your accessibility toolkit, now that it is completed and, in, and sort of say online and accessible to everyone, um, has it been replicated elsewhere? Is it being used by organizations? Are there any case studies you can share with us? Yes, certainly. Um, one of the ones we're most proud of is, um, and so we've worked a lot with uh, various uh, uh, levels of the UK government, Canadian government, and uh, the government of British Columbia uh, actually have replicated and uh, have developed their own accessibility on an online inclusion toolkit. Um, that's available to view on their website of the government of British Columbia, um, just in their accessibility tab towards the uh, end of the home page. But um, we're more than happy to share that link as well. As for case studies, uh, Vision Australia over here, 
uh, put together a case study and that covers the development of the policy, the toolkit, um, also the website design system, which we designed to be accessible by default, and uh, uh, also the impact that they were starting to see it had in the community and the flow on effect as well. So that uh, case study is called Push and Pull, Why South Australia Leads the Way in Online Accessibility. Uh, and that's uh, either available Google or again, we'll, uh, we'll supply the link on that one. But we're particularly proud of that because uh, it's, uh, it's extremely pleasing. Uh, you know, an organisation such as Vision Australia uh, taking the time to put together a case study and really championing our work as well. It's fantastic to hear, especially I think also the international reach with British Columbia effectively, effectively replicating what you've put together. Now I'm curious if there are, you know, perhaps folks from the public sector watching this or municipalities or government representatives and they want to do the same. Is this open? Is that avenue of interaction open to reach out and say, you know, could we do copy paste? You know, could we learn from you? Could we replicate what you're doing? Is that something in consideration uh, at the government of South Australia? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, all Creative Commons. Uh, Commons. Um, we're also on hand, uh, um, RAF as well, with the um, the contact uh, for, and I think the email address, correct me if I'm wrong, RAF, is onlineaccessibility at sa.gov.au. Um, uh, but again, we'll, we'll supply that. But uh, yeah, it's, um, it's Creative Commons. Uh, I don't think there's anything in the toolkit that uh, uh, can't be replicated. There are links to organisational resources that sit outside of South Australian government, so they may have um, copyright on them. But uh, again, following the same principle uh, as we did, we, we link to those and we're very clear in that uh, linkage as well. But um, yeah, I'm sure um, RAF and the team would love to hear from anybody that's interested in replicating uh, the online accessibility toolkit or find out more. Fantastic. And also, yeah. please, Raf, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just you know, just basically saying that that is the model that we always intended to have, was a model that uh, where we build once and others can leverage off. Um, you know, we're, we're quite happy to share. We're not uh, of the opinion that this is built and it should be ours. It should be shared and should be replicated as much as possible. Fantastic. And also, uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to plug our own Zero Project database, which of course includes this very um, awardee and project and has also a contact button, which uh, will get you in touch with the government of South Australia. So two ways to go about it. Uh, we'll share the email address uh, Cliff and Raf just mentioned, but also zeroproject.org. Enter and for the search term online accessibility and this very uh, word is the one of the first which will pop up. Um, I wanted to um, come back to the consultation phase because um, I think for our audience, what could is especially interesting with I think big endeavors and big projects like this is how do you bring together persons with disabilities? How is that outreach and how does this consultation happen? Does it happen in person? Does it happen online? Are the tools which are supposed to facilitate this consultation phase also accessible? Because you know the irony of it would be to have a consultation phase dedicated to web accessibility on a platform or using software which itself is not accessible. So I'm wondering if you could share a bit more insight into how those consultations took place, what tools were used, because I think our audience would also like to maybe have some takeaways to say, ah, this is how Perhaps I can, um, you know, bring together groups, uh, bring together uh, DPOs, bring together persons with disabilities for topics such as web accessibility. Yeah, I'm um, happy to answer that one. We, um, I was very lucky, um, as I said at the beginning, uh, I had a background in the disability sector and uh, got a lot of contacts in the disability field. Um, and in terms of tools and stuff, I guess no mystery to it. We're very um, keen on the face-to-face -face interaction and building that relationship and, and really getting to know the people providing feedback. Um, that was done over a number of workshops, but also visiting people in their own homes to see how they use assistive technology, and in particular, the barriers they were facing accessing government uh, services, information, um, events, and so on. So 
it was really about getting a deep understanding as well as uh, people with disability, also the disability organisations such as Vision Australia, Royal Society for the Blind, Blind Citizens Australia, really listening to their feedback, which they'd been um, uh, putting together over a number of years and uh, also uh, uh, talking with uh, their um, uh, um, people that uh, were linked in with their services as well in the community. So it was really about um, getting out there and uh, the impact. I'm sure there's, uh, you know, people think well, what kind of impact did that have on your day to day work? Um, the impact was actually quite minimal um, and uh, sat alongside our um, day to day uh, role as well. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't a huge impact, but we, we learned a lot during that phase, especially about the barriers people were facing. Um, and we also extended that to public servants and we were very keen to find out what barriers they were actually facing while trying to implement online accessibility. For example, um, were they not supported by their manager? Did they not have the resources or culture within the team? Um, so yeah, we, we did hit it from both ways, but as I say, well, we were very lucky with the contacts that we had um, that put us in contact with people with disabilities so we could actually um, uh, get that information firsthand. I'd like to take this opportunity because I just noticed uh, that we have also an additional expert who has just joined us, which is Brett Manuel. And Brett, thank you for being with us and uh, I think also relaying uh, the stories and the lessons learned, uh, which Cliff and Raphael have touched upon. Um, I would like to give you the floor and if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself and also visually describe yourself to our online audience. Um, Brett, can you hear us? It's I can do. <laughs> Apologies. Hi, I'm Brett Manuel. I'm with the Department of Premier and Cabinet here in South Australia. Visually describe myself, um, um, a cuddly 50-year-old male. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Brett. Very to the point. Um, to get you up to speed, Brett, we were talking about the uh, consultation phase and kind of how that it was structured when it comes to the uh, online accessibility toolkit of the government of South Australia. And uh, Cliff and Raf were giving some great insights, um, really explaining that this was a very thorough process and um, involved also visiting persons with disabilities at their home understanding in a kind of a customer feedback way how they access services, the barriers they face, and to truly understand the toolkit and what tools you need to have within that toolkit in order, in order to remove those barriers. And Brett, since you are um, uh, situated in the Department of the Premier and Cabinet of the Government of South Australia, I wanted to ask you the million dollar question, which I think a lot of our viewers are, have on their mind with a project like this, it, namely, how do you get things approved in government? How do you bring something like this to fruition? Because regardless of uh, continent, regardless of region, it's always on the top of our mind. There is the famous bureaucracy. There is the famous red tape. How do you get around it? How do you get such a colossal project approved? And I was wondering if you could share some insights with our viewers. Uh, great question, but I, I'm going to go with the fact that when you've got people that are passionate about a topic, your leaders around you and the people around you know that because it's who you are, it's what you live and breathe. Um, and sometimes you've, you've got to push your own way through, make your own opportunities. And, and that certainly happened in the case of this uh, project. But I've seen it time and time again, those people that um, their passion and their integrity is what leads the way. Um, and then possibly also just proving people wrong um, by um, gaining the support of um, the end users or people that are gonna be uh, positively affected by a, a project and, and then they'll come on board. They'll have no choice but to see um, that this is something that the community wants and um, the, the community will help to create a momentum. Positivity can be contagious. That is my takeaway. Cliff and Raf, do you have anything uh, to elaborate on that or any uh, other 
kind of experiences within the process or, you know, perhaps frustrations you had and which you were able to overcome in creative ways you'd like to share? Oh, yeah. Um, basically, I, I would like to add to Brett's sentiment there that um, it's also the organisations, the key organisations and stakeholders that you deal with uh, on, you know, during your process of building something like this, that um, if, you, if you didn't have uh, them evangelizing basically your our work um, I don't think it would have got as far as as it has um, I think it, it got legs very early because uh, some key organizations did take up take the time to make our powers that be noticed that this was a worthwhile effort and then they got behind it and I think um, adding to that, Robin, that um, you know, government, as I'm sure there's uh, uh, some people from government viewing this, um, you know, it's really important to have that top down support. And I think we were really lucky with all aspects uh, that we did have that top down support. And uh, yet we had to gain trust and we did that via the good news stories, as, as Raf and Brett have alluded to. And uh, good news builds confidence and uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that we uh, we repaid that top-down support because we are aware in other governments uh, from talking to governments uh, in developing this resource and the model um, that sometimes uh, they're, they're struggling with top-down support. So I think that was that was very important, and I think we were very lucky with the top-down support we had. Um, I know Eva spoke the other night at the uh, Zero Project opening. Um, to have that level of support really um, open the doors uh, that may have not been opened otherwise. But uh, yeah, definitely the community engagement and uh, the support they gave and the good news stories that came out of that was really important. I'd like to go, you mentioned uh, top down and kind of uh, flip that equation and ask bottom up, what has the feedback been? to the toolkit because uh, you know we've all seen it it's gone through the, the zero project peer review it is an awardd but uh, i'm curious what is the feedback from people perhaps who have not engaged very much with the web accessibility topic and have stumbled upon let's say this this resource is it kind of a eureka moment that you've gotten a lot of emails who said wow you know Finally, I understand in a very comprehensive, easy language way, you've outlined A to Z, thank you for that. Or is it more that dedicated experts in the web accessibility space have said, you know, rather than having to go to 40 places, it's all in one now. So I'm curious if you could share some of the, you know, how, what have you heard from the customers? What have you heard from the bottom? And who are these customers? Are these companies? Are these individuals who are using your resource? Perhaps you can, you know, give us some um, use, usage statistics in that sense. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's been a bit of all that really, Robin. It's, it's really been quite humbling. Um, I guess tracking back before we, we launched the toolkit, uh, we did develop it around the feedback we got. Uh, for example, the, the consultation we had with the community and public servants around the barriers that they had in implementing online accessibility. So we knew what people were looking for. We knew the topics they were after and we knew uh, principles like uh, people want it as role based. Uh, a project manager def you know, doesn't necessarily want to know what a content person uh, role is, but did wants to, you know, if it's there, it's it's there and they can have a look, but they wanted to know what was there for them uh, uh, predominantly. And um, so we built the toolkit around the feedback. So I guess there's early reviews by um, when it wasn't live by Vision Australia and so on. We kind of got an inkling, hey, we, we're onto something here. Um, this is this is actually being well received. And then when it went out uh, live, Yep, we started to get that feedback from the community. Uh, I think the one that sticks in my mind is um, so somebody coming to me and said that toolkit's actually made a difference for my uh, uh, uncle, I think, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, that was working in a department that actually thought that accessibility wasn't on the radar of South Australian government and uh, it gave him a new lease of life because he actually realised uh, that it was important to him uh, and uh, or to the government and uh, he was valued and so on. So um, yeah, that, that sort of feedback we've been getting. Um, 
from private businesses. Um, a lot of organisations are finding out about Easy Read. Uh, and the principles around Easy Read. So it's been a, a really um, broad spectrum of the community, not just public servants, but private business, um, disability organisations, other states in, um, in Australia, other jurisdictions like British Columbia. So the feedback is, uh, and the usage has been um, a yeah, really pleasing um, aspect to the project. If there's no other input for, from from Raf or or Brett, I you know talking about comprehension, what I would like to do is to bring over a graphic facilitator, Petra Plitschka. Uh, Brett, you you might have m missed in the opening. We introduced our graphic facilitator, and she's a wonderful uh, companion of the Zero Project who follows us in all our events and um, visualizes our conversations because they are of course individuals who learn better with symbols and images than of us talking. So I would like to give the stage to Petra who will narrate and explain some of the drawings and visualizations she was developing live on the flow and on the go as we were having this wonderful conversation. Petra, please. Okay. Um, for visually impaired people, I will of course explain what I drew and for those who have dyslexia, like I do. Um, the drawings are probably helpful. Um, so what did we hear? We heard from um, a policy that was drafted um, and it all started in 2017 and it all ended up in, a, in an online accessibility toolkit. So that's what we were talking about and we heard how this process went. Um, we heard that there was a lot of involvement of people in the consultation phase so the stakeholders were very keen key to um, come up with that solution. A lot of organizations, um, experts, you had working groups, you had um, your target group are 56,000 people, if I got that correct, and about 1,000 public servants. So they all are target group, but also experts on how to create this toolkit. Um, very interesting also for us here at Zero Project is, of course, it's a very international project. You have reached out to other countries, to other governments, and it's all common uh, creative commons. So other people can also use this toolkit. Um, you also gave us an email address. I will finish that <laughs> later on so we can find it here on the, on the picture. And um, the good thing was that there was um, very good top-down support, but also bottom-up input. Um, right at the end, I heard a lot about feedback going in to the whole thing. And with that feedback, you also gained momentum uh, for your government to create that even further. And the government reached out to users and communities. Yeah, so community involvement, um, user involvement, getting the feedback to have a very good online toolkit on accessibility. That's my summary. Perfect. Absolutely. Claps, uh, claps all the way from Australia. We hear them and we feel them. And uh, just like that, Petra basically summarized our 30-minute conversation in, in, in what, like one, two minutes? Thank you, Petra. Really fantastic. And uh, Cliff and Raf, I really want to thank you and Brett as well for, for joining us today, for really telling us about your journey and uh, about the online accessibility toolkit of the government of South Australia, which has gone already far away places as British Columbia. And hopefully after this conversation and through our Zero Project database, and most, most importantly with your positive efforts and positivity, as Brett said, um, will be able to also be shared and replicated elsewhere around the world. And that really for us is what the Zero Project is about. So big thank you. Please enjoy your evenings. We know it's fr Friday evening. Uh, there are better things you could have done. So thank you for taking the time and thank you for your attention. And uh, we are really privileged to have you as a Zero Project at Wordy. My pleasure. Good night. Thank you, Robert. Thank you.